what's up everyone I am kind of spur of the moment again with this video but I decided to film my creation of my whitetail arrows for this year um, I don't think I really ever did a video and I said that I would so I figured I might as well just do it um, I've kind of been putting it off I built a few just for my antelope hunt um, but I certainly need more for whitetails this year. Um, so that being said, um, I figured I would just take you guys through the process. Pretty straightforward video, nothing like extremely exciting, but I will talk about like my specs and um, why I chose everything that I did. Um, Corbin, you guys know I work with him very closely, so he's been kind of a heavy influence on you know why I choose certain things he knows his stuff so he's very good at saying hey I think you should use this sometimes I listen sometimes I don't but um, for the most part um, he has not led me astray so I really like my my current setup and I figured I would share it with you guys and gals who may also have similar bow specs that you know I have which obviously is important because there's a lot of guys out there just talking away and everything that they're saying really you know only applies to men who are shooting heavy weight and they want those heavy arrows so let's build some arrows so first things first the arrows that i'm using are the easton axis spt five millimeter and a 500 spine so um those are my personal preference they are a lighter arrow but i I think with my bow specs, they tend to be the best. I shoot 48 pounds, um, and really anywhere like low poundage, I think a 500 spine is pretty good. Um, and then these ones I technically started already because I was using them for practice, um, but I've got the five millimeter, um, let me see, I call them an outsert. They're half, they're aluminum, half out, number two, 25 grains, um, no particular reason. They just usually come with this arrow already. And so I have just been using them and I really like them that really haven't had any issues. Um, so I'll be using those. And then I've got nocturnal lighted knocks on the back end, which these are the universal ones. And um, for no particular reason, I just for whatever reason started using those and that's what I use. Easton arrows take the size X for Knox, so the universal just comes standard that size and for whatever reason their universal Knox are different looking than their regular Knox. Like this is just a regular X only size. And I I don't know if it's like a superstition thing, but like for me I'd rather just have them all the same and since I already sighted in with these I'm just gonna keep them that way and not use these that's uh maybe being a little too picky but I'm very like I like having my stuff like cohesive and and uh all the same so um that's what I'll be doing and these just come with the blazer or boning veins bully veins I don't know um so I'm going to strip those off and put on the AAE hybrid I think these are like 23s from Corbin I'm going to do a four fletch and that is not necessarily for any particular reason except that I shoot a four blade uh, broadhead and so I don't know, I haven't done enough testing with it but they fly very true, very solid. Um, so I really think the four fletch kind of helps with steering. Um, I could be wrong on that but that's just, I really have not noticed any issues with the four blade. Um, with the four fletch. So this year um, I'm gonna be doing the rec broadheads. Let me make sure you guys can see this. Okay. The rec broadheads, these are new of a new four blade that they came out with this year. Um, I used to shoot slick tricks, but I'm good friends with the, the owner of this company, so I'm gonna give them a go. I'm actually gonna probably shoot one tonight. I shot my antelope with the rec expandable. Um, two blade and they shot really well. So I'm going to try a fixed head. I really prefer fixed blades um, Simply because my poundage is lower and I really want that cut on contact 
I've seen too many horror stories with, you know, expandables hitting a limb or something or not deploying properly. And I just personally don't prefer to use them. So we're gonna, we're gonna stick with these, I think, as long as they're flying good, which I don't have any doubts with it. So we'll show you guys that when I'm done, but that is pretty much it. I'm also gonna put some wraps on. I ran out of this color, so I'm gonna have to probably do like yellow or something for a few of them, but I think Corbin's gonna send me more, so then I'll just, you know, build more that have green. Obviously green is my color this year, so that's just what we're sticking with. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do with these is take off the old veins. And I think there's a tool that you can use that's like meant to do this, but I usually kind of just take a knife, work it at like a 45 degree angle-ish, give or take. And you just kind of slice them off. You're kind of just scraping all the glue to get the vein off. There might be a better technique to this, but I'm not very good at it, so. Okay, anyway, you get the idea. So I'll do that with all of them. I usually don't have to take veins off when I'm fletching, so. Um, final product, which I think, I mean, there's definitely a little bit of glue still, but I will be putting wraps on. So I don't think it's gonna matter because I mean, I scraped it pretty well, but I guess you can't get everything. So I'm gonna do some alcohol rub on the glue just to kind of get off any excess. Clean the, clean the arrow a little bit. Which I will say when you do the like knife technique, you gotta kinda be careful that you don't cut into the carbon too much. Which I don't think I did. Okay, so for the inserts, obviously I'm, you know, they're already in there, so I'm not gonna do that part of the process, but I can show you um, for anyone who doesn't know how to do that really quickly. Um, so this is my bottom of my arrow, so let's just pretend this side is the bottom. Um, so you're gonna obviously get the same size that, like, so these are five, five millimeter, so you want five millimeter inserts. Um, but basically what you do is, like, take a torch, um, and then some type of glue. It looks like wax, to be honest, but, what you're gonna do is um, turn on your torch, heat up the glue a little bit, and then you're gonna kinda just roll your um, insert in the hot glue. Be very careful, cause I burn myself all the time doing it, but, um, and then what I do is, um, like by the time I'm done rolling it, it's cooling down, so then, you know, I just get a little bit, just enough to kinda like cover it a thin layer, I think. Um, and then what you do is like, just be careful, just wave the glue that's on the insert over the flame a little bit and then, um, like stick it. A lot of times it's easier just to kind of put it down onto a, a table or something and just like push it down till it's nice and snug and you're going to have excess that'll come out on the sides, but give it like, I don't know, 20 seconds or so until it starts to harden just enough that like it's not going to burn you and then you can just like peel off the excess um and then a lot of times it's enough to like just stick back on the main bit of glue but um that's literally all you have to do and then you're ready to go to stick a field tip or broadhead or whatever you want in it so you know i usually give them like when i build arrows i usually give them like overnight to just fully dry and you know get set and stuff, so. But I don't think you necessarily need to. That's just kinda better safe than sorry, so. 
anyway, so that would be that step, um, which, so my draw length is 25 inches. Um, and so I usually cut my arrows to be roughly like an inch or so longer. Kind of just depends on the broadhead that you're going to use um, and how much clearance you have. I only ever have shot Matthews, so I'm not entirely sure. I would have to like literally look at other bows, but I think a lot of the risers are about the same. Um, but I like to have, let me get my bow, at least this much clearance for where your broadhead is going to go, which let me, let me actually show you. It's easier to show if I'm drawn back, but, um, you know, so your hand's going to be like roughly right here. You know, you don't want it, you don't want your broadhead to be like where it could possibly slice you on the way by, especially if you got them real long blades on, like that's obviously pretty dangerous. Um, so when you're at full draw, you want to have at least an extra like inch or so of clearance. Um, so that way, like there's no chance of you really hitting your hand. Um, I'm just paranoid about that. Cause I've seen, I've seen a few photos of people who just have sent arrows to their hand and it just like freaks me out. So I, I'm, I like to play it a little safe, I'm sorry. Um, so I honestly don't know how long these are, but I think I cut them to 26 and then, well, and that's with the knock in it. So I cut them, I put the knock in, cut them to 26 and then, um, the outsert, I think, adds like an extra half inch or so. So I think that's about how much clearance I have, which is, I think, fine. Um, so that's kind of just like a personal preference, but like something I think is worth noting. So I've got um, one wrap left of Corbin, and then I had to go get some uh, boning veins because I, I need arrows this week, and Corbin is like, oh, they'll be there next week. So I'll build more arrows next week, but for now, we're just going to start with this one and uh, see how it goes. So you're going to find a flat surface and basically take your wrap off. Like you're going to wrap it like, so if it's laying flat like this, you're going to wrap it either this way or you could have like your logo at the end of the arrow if you wanted to, which is probably what I'll do kind of just doesn't really matter. Um, and wraps a lot of the time are different sizes. Um, it's important to know what um, like diameter your arrows are. And I think, I mean, like you, can get, you can get them real long too. And I think these are, okay, these look about the same. So four inch smalls is the sizing, which I don't really know what that means, but like Corbin has them really long and then I usually just cut them um, to about this, which when it's on your arrow, it ends up looking about like this. So my veins are roughly halfway um, in the middle of, you know, the wrap, which I think is plenty. I mean, you really could have it way down, which I don't know if that really makes a difference, but I just personally like them about like that. So, especially if you have like really crazy colors, I don't like too much color because, um, I mean, green obviously blends in, but like if you have white, personally, I don't like using white anything because white tails use the color white as danger. You know, that's literally why they have white on their tail is because that's one of the, one of the colors that stands out to their eye since they're fairly colorblind. Um, so white is danger to them. And if they're looking up in the tree and they see a big, big uh, quiver full of glowing white, I don't know if that's an issue, but personally, I just don't want to risk that. So you literally just want to lay it. I like to lay it against like the edge of a surface. They're very sticky. Um, and then you're just gonna take your arrow and do your best to like line it up on the very end, lay it down flat, push on it, and then just slowly kind of rock it back and forth and roll it. Oh, I may not 
not have done that enough. Oh, now this is a bad example. I didn't roll it enough. Anyway. That was a bad example because I did not do that smoothly. But anyway, that's what it should look like. Just smooth. <laughs> Let's try the yellow. Looking good. Um, oh, also, I just thought of this. When you first get your arrows, I guess you could do it after too, but I like to do like a spin test. You can either just like do it. I, guess, I mean, like technically you can do it on a flat surface and you can see if it rolls and rocks back and forth, but um, this is just being really picky and for like close range stuff, it doesn't matter, but for like really far distances, I think it does make a difference. Um, but when you spin test them, you wanna make sure your arrows are straight. Um, so basically if you just kind of like roll them on, it has to be a perfectly flat surface, but if you roll them and like they spin and then they like rock back and forth, that means they're not straight. There's just gotta be like some sort of bow in them to cause that like rock. If they're perfectly straight, they'll just keep rolling or they'll stop um, and not have much rock to them. You know, obviously there's like things that you can buy that are meant for arrow spinning, but um, anyway, I'm like very psycho about that kind of stuff. I like everything to be like perfect because then if something goes wrong and then I can know that it was probably me instead of like my equipment and everything, but it really isn't a big deal for like, you know, most 20 yard to 40 yard shots. So anyway, that's just like a little thing that I just thought of to say. Okay, so now we're gonna do veins and got my Blitzenberger. This little thing has done a lot of arrows. I guess I better make sure there's four. If I'm like sniffling, my allergies are so bad right now. I get really bad fall allergies, so it kind of sucks, but all right. So one, two, three, four. Okay, so we're set to four fletch. So what I like to do is three green and one black. just because that's what I like. So what we're gonna do is you stick your knock in the end. And this, like, you can also get kind of crazy with this, like if you're really particular and have your, um, all of your labels essentially facing the same. You can do it with your wraps, you know. You can put your um, knocks in on the same point of the, 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 um, why can't I think of it? Of the wraps. <laughs> Sorry, it's been a long day. Um, you know, everybody kind of has their own preference. This is just like, I'm just pointing it out because some people like that. Um, you know, they like the super uniform look, which I do as well, but certain things like where your knock is positioned doesn't necessarily bother me. But, okay, so just for funsies, we'll position it towards the label um, which obviously you can spin it later, but um, with the AAE hybrids, um, you don't need to run alcohol on them. Some veins you definitely do, um, and then other ones, if you're just running them on the arrow itself instead of a wrap, you may also need to rub them down just to kind of get any imperfections out so they don't like peel off on you, but these in particular, you don't have to. Don't ask me why, but Corbin says you don't have to, so you don't have to. <laughs> so then I just line it up based on the little notches that are on this. I usually just put it at the lowest one and like to, like to kind of hold it up and, and just like test it. And then you can see where it's at, which it's always nice when you have a few done ahead of time so you can kind of compare. And the vein adhesive that I use is just the AAE Max Bond. Also don't know if that matters. Like I'm sure some glues are better than others, but this one has treated me pretty good. So I really have no reason to switch. 
And then this part is always fun because I always use way too much. Then you kind of just go down it and do little dabs of it and space it out a little. And then what I do is like I take the little pore spout and I kind of just like evenly rub it in. The part that I find easiest is to just kind of start with the bottom and push that onto the um, arrow first and then you kind of just like work your way towards the top. That was kind of a bad example because I'm doing it backwards so it's a little awkward but you basically just kind of like slowly press it on so that way um, your glue distributes evenly and you don't get like air bubbles and random stuff on the inside. Usually I let it sit for like 10-ish seconds. Just enough to dry before I rotate and then one done. And you literally just do the same thing. Here are just a few of them that I got done. I think they honestly look pretty good. Let's go shoot. So I've got one arrow built. Um, to the full specs. I'm gonna shoot it 20, 30, 40. Then I might just launch it at like 50 or 60 just to see how it flies at far distances. Um, but more than likely, I'm not gonna shoot a deer past 40. I just don't like to a lot of the time because they're so, you know, duck the string kind of an animal. So um, 40 is usually what I would shoot at at a white tail. So um, yeah, let's do it. Okay, first shot's gonna be at 20 yards. Um, and I do wanna note that it is very important to tune your bow, paper tune your bow, and um, broadhead tune if necessary. So we'll see how they're flying and if I have to make any like adjustments. So 20. It's gonna be at this red target. I am good at 20. All right, so second shot, we're gonna do it 30 yards. And uh, I do wanna note, it's important to shoot your broadhead, but it's good to have like a practice set, a practice set and a regular set for hunting. Um, Cause if you shoot them a bunch of times, they get really dull and that's just not good for shooting at a live animal, obviously. So. Caribou at 30. Okay, we're gonna shoot that elf back there at 40. Both them. Okay, just for funsies, I'm gonna shoot to 50. Like I said, I probably won't shoot the deer that far, but I guess it's good to have the option. is on like seriously this is probably some of the best shooting I've ever done so certainly helps um, that I shot I think tax this year because that really forced me to shoot a lot at home and these like farther ranges make the, the close shots like feel a lot more comfortable so if you have the opportunity I definitely recommend you know doing like far shots even like 50 I would say would be a good distance because then when they're at 20 and 30 you just feel a lot more confident so at least i do <laughs> all right guys well that does it i think for my arrow build 
video. Um, I am honestly thoroughly impressed with this setup. It is, I mean, flying great. These uh, broad heads, of, this is the first time I've shot these fixed heads. Um, so I honestly think they fly exactly like a field tip. I didn't have to do any sort of tuning or anything other than, you know, my bow is paper tuned, but um, I really can't ask for much more to be honest. And I've always just kind of been a fan of four blades anyway, so I really, I was kind of drawn to these. These are new this year, so I wanted to test them out and uh, help a friend out too. So if you guys are interested in those, um, the link to his website is gonna be down in my description, but um, yeah, I'll, I'll for sure be using those. And uh, I really like this setup. I think my total arrow weight, let me actually weigh that real fast. Three eighty four and a half, basically. Three eighty four, three eighty five is about what I'm running. So um, it's kind of just one of those things that I think a lot of people think that they need, just like a heavy arrow to to get penetration. But the reality is, like, you have to kind of match match your bow specs to your arrow specs because I mean, you know, somebody like me with a twenty five inch draw shooting 48 pounds, you know, shooting a super heavy arrow is not going to do me much good. I'm not going to get the penetration because it's going to be too heavy for my bow. Um, you know, so I, uh, there's no hate to any other content people out there that are saying like, Hey, you need this heavy arrow set up. I mean, I'm sure for some people it works great, but you got to kind of think like, okay, what, what's going to be good for me? Not like what works for them necessarily. If, uh, somebody shooting a 75 pound bow with a, I don't know, 29 inch draw, their specs are gonna be way different than someone like me. So I wouldn't be wanting to shoot the same same setup as they have. So, um, you know, I'm not somebody that knows a ton on the technical side, but I do like, you know, the stuff that I share with you guys is stuff that I'm genuinely speaking from experience. Um, just stuff that I've personally tried out and have had success with. Um, or if I don't have success, I usually tell you guys too. So, um, anyway, that's, uh, I think that's a wrap for this one. And I start whitetail hunting this week, which is so exciting. Um, I'm going to be heading to a, obviously an early state. It's September. So I'll leave that a surprise till the next video, but I am really looking forward to it. I've never been there. So it's going to be a kind of going in blind and, and using some, some Onyx maps and hoping for the best. I've been doing a little e-scouting so far, so I think I have a good idea of where I wanna be, but um, you know, I'm willing to, to move around too. So we shall see, but I am looking forward to it. Thanks for watching guys, and I will see you during deer season.